Hey guys, my Pesha from Devrix here. Today's topic is, does it make sense to build a web application platform on top of a custom-made content management system or a framework, or is it better to use an existing and established one? So, in a nutshell, does it make sense to create a CMS from scratch, or rather invest in something that's already out there and exists and you know something like WordPress, Drupal, Joomla and so forth. Uh, that's a great question simply because <clears throat> yeah, about 15 years ago actually it was quite popular to create yet another custom-made uh, you know CMS by a lot of people out there. Um, in fact most of the peers in my circle back then when we were starting uh, two or three years later all of us have created our own custom, custom uh, CMS's simply because it was uh, something that made sense. Why? It was about 15 years ago and um, if you take a look at your calendar essentially it was about 2003 and that's the year where WordPress has been started in the first place. Uh, also PHP was still version uh, 4 point something which means it wasn't uh, fully OP compatible uh, you know most of the platforms that we know now weren't anywhere near that much mature as the ones that we know nowadays like again WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, uh, Joomla Mambo, forum platforms and so forth which means that in order to create something robust and something more complicated and like for example use uh, some DBA layer like uh, something for ORM or uh, Active Record or something like that that wasn't really existing or it was still in its very early infant, uh, infant stages so for that matter creating a CMS back then made sense right now it doesn't make sense that much because uh, first off the existing platforms are really mature and are already well tested and have uh, professional development teams and not only development but product planning and management and creative and UX accessibility hosting support translation and so forth working on the maturity and the growth of a specific platform in any way possible uh, second most of the well probably almost all if not all of the excellent platforms out there are open source which means that uh, you as a client your technical team has access to your source code they can identify potential uh, leaks or pitfalls or anything like that uh, they can identify specific problems and also expand on the existing code base which unlike for example let's take uh, Microsoft Word or, or Microsoft Windows you just don't have access to the code base that's pretty much it you don't have access to it and you you can't really change it if you want to like there are specific things you can tinker with but not so much while on the other hand with Linux or you know open source software like again WordPress or Drupal or Joomla you can change everything pretty much everything and uh, at some point of time you may hit a specific problem you may reach the problem that the platform doesn't really fully support so you need to find a way to to solve your problem one way or another for the most part it's going to be through going through the hooking event management whatever model of the CMS but sometimes you pretty much have to hack the core it's completely not recommended but if there's no other way it's at least at least it's possible right uh, so that open source thing makes a lot of sense and again back in the day where people were creating their own custom CMS uh, the vendor lock-in was a pretty strong concern for customers why because most clients uh, you know they, they kind of hired they asked for a, a project built by a development agency or company and you know they create a project uh, the agency normally purchase the host you know hosting domain stuff like that and manage that on their end because it was still a bit harder not as well known you know hosting companies weren't really targeted to clients directly uh, and, and so on so that that's kind of what happened but when the, the business needs something as part of their maintenance and ongoing support and so forth uh, their only option was paying their initial vendor and that often led to massive surges in terms of charges and fees and costs that didn't make sense for example a vendor may ask for you know a thousand dollars to change a banner something that takes you know 20 minutes with a like by a non-technical user sometimes uh, and, and that's pretty much it you know if, if you work with that specific agency that's what you're going to do if you want to change the banner if your advertiser pays you twenty thousand dollars 
you don't want to pay a thousand dollars for something that costs 50 but you don't really have any other option unless buying for a completely new website with another company with another custom cms and so forth uh, also that means for the client that uh, you know you can't really find easily people who can support that if needed and if you somehow manage to gain access to that specific product so you know you're kind of lost that's why people are choosing either frameworks like uh, laravel symphony zen uh, cake php and so forth or cms platforms like wordpress and drupal and whatnot uh, in order to build their software because they have established best practices they have been proven to work for the most part you know in almost all use cases out there uh, and while they may solve you know 98% of the problem or they may be a bit slower than the other solutions like built from scratch uh, when you take a look from a business perspective it makes a bit, a bit more sense like for example one of the projects that we've built for a client uh, a couple years ago or so <coughs> so we were doing a migration for, from a, a node product plus a redesign and our uh, initial fee was uh, I think fifty or sixty thousand dollars with a retainer for about another forty thousand dollars here so we've released the first version updated the project and so on and so on so after that you know I jumped on a, uh, on a call with a client and say okay you know we just want to figure out how you reached out you know kind of a lead generation strategy call figuring out how they found us and how they started with us and so on so they said well we are looking at enterprise uh, web content management solutions and they asked for four hundred thousand dollars set up initial build and development and then a hundred thousand dollars of uh, maintenance you know that's a, a self-hosted solution ran by three different enterprises you know you can kind of pick one uh, their costs were pretty much approximately the same so they said well we thought that for those 100,000 we could pretty much hire a CTO in-house or just hire an agency to keep innovating and developing and building on top of our solution. So from that standpoint, this is a, a loosely uh, open-ended option and an alternative that you can pick, uh, an option to kind of invest in the ongoing growth and development of your platform and the opportunity to invest in something in use by you know millions or tens of millions of websites out there. After all, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You don't want to spend years on quality assurance and finding annoying bugs simply because no one else is testing the product, which again is what makes uh, you know open source content management system platforms the better solution for the most part.